morning. My name is Ron Bajos, and I'm founder and CEO of Venium. Imagine a city where every bus, every car, and every truck not only drives itself, but is also an active part of the wireless infrastructure. This means that every vehicle is able to connect to another vehicle in a mesh and be able to move massive amounts of data from the physical world to the cloud. This is not science fiction. We actually built the largest mesh network of connected vehicles in the world in Porto, Portugal, the city where I was born and raised. These vehicles do not drive themselves yet, but they're already providing free Wi-Fi to more than 400,000 people every single day. And moreover, they're working as mobile sensors gathering terabytes of urban data for smart city applications. We're really entering the third big mobility revolution. If you think about it, 4,000 years ago, we used to use horses to be able to move faster than our legs allow us to. And in around 1885, we introduced the car, which was a lot more than a faster horse. In fact, it completely changed our way of life. It also changed how our cities are built and operated. I will argue that actually autonomous vehicles are also a lot more than simply cars that are able to drive themselves. We are going to see that they are also going to fundamentally change how we live. And if you want just one figure to prove that, it's that we will need five to 10 times less cars. No more parking. We'll have a lot more space, hopefully for gardens and playgrounds. Uh, we'll be able to use vehicles in a seamless way through on-demand mobility as a service providers. Uh, and in fact, the vehicles are going to be part of our city infrastructure exactly like elevators are today part of our built infrastructure. Now, how do we make this revolution possible, which is also, by the way, incredibly necessary because it's the only way that we are going to be able to lower CO2 emissions to a point where we can actually avert the worst consequences of climate change. How can we do this? Well, we'll have to be able to move massive amounts of data between vehicles and the cloud. And how? Well, for one, they require GPS, LiDAR, cameras, radar. All of that generates terabytes and terabytes already. Plus, they need to get high resolution maps, software updates, safety data, infotainment for the users. And they need to upload road data to share with other vehicles, security videos, vehicle telemetry, passenger data, tons and tons and tons of data. That alone is already four terabytes per day. On top of that, we are not going to be driving anymore. And what are you going to do when you are not driving anymore? You're going to be on the internet. And so we are going to have massive amounts of internet traffic coming from the users who are no longer driving. And what does this mean for a city? Well, let's look at Barcelona. Here's La Ramba today. We'll have you know, about 400 people generating 330 megabytes per hour. And the vehicles? Well, although there are 1.2 billion vehicles in the world, actually only 5% of them are connected to the internet. So right now, they generate you know, a negligible amount of data, if at all. Now, in 2025, this is going to be completely different. And why? Because on the one hand, people will be consuming even more data. There's no such thing as too much bandwidth. And on top of that, our vehicles are going to be autonomous vehicles that require, again, massive amounts of data, 160 gigabytes per hour in a small street like that. So the trillion dollar question is, how can we move terabytes of data between vehicles and the cloud? Now, Venium has been deploying vehicle mesh networks around the world, first in Porto, then in Singapore, then in New York. And that has given us unique insights into the type of software, hardware, and cloud infrastructure you require to actually be able to operate very reliable managed services on top of a mesh network of vehicles that is constantly changing. And so let me show you what we have learned so far. So again, this is Porto, where the largest vehicle mesh network in the world today resides. Uh, all the buses, uh, many taxis, garbage collection trucks, municipal service vehicles uh, are now Wi-Fi hotspots, and they have onboard units that allow them to connect to each other in a mesh and to the internet. And so 400,000 users are using it today. In Singapore, we started with the shuttles in the National University. And we realized that actually the traffic was 
26 times higher than Porto because you had lots of lots of students, even with two smartphones, one for Facebook, one for Pokemon Go. Now, in New York, we have the downtown shuttles where basically today we're offering free Wi-Fi, but we're also placing ads in digital to screens because transportation is actually moving from paper advertising to digital to screens, and that's even more data that you need to be moving. Now, how can we actually leverage this mesh? Well, here's a picture of our network operations center where you can actually see the vehicles connecting to each other. The onboard unit has 4G LTE, but also DSRC, which is the 5.9 gigahertz band technology that allows vehicles to communicate with each other and is reserved for intelligent transportation systems. The cloud then orchestrates all the handovers, the entire mobility, and all the applications that actually go on this mesh to ensure that we have you know, the best service we can possibly have. And so on top of that, we make local decisions on the data, which data needs to be sent immediately, which data can be stored and sent later. That's delay tolerant networking and a critical part of moving data around as well, especially the data that does not need to be sent in real time. The position of the vehicle needs to be sent so you know when the vehicle is coming, but onboard diagnostics, cameras, uh, footage, uh, and also user data, much of that can be stored and sent later. So this is a platform that is ready for the future in that it actually leverages many networks and is able to provide an exceptional service. Now, I would argue that this is already 5G. If you think about it, we have mobility, we have manageability, diversity, very, very low latency, critical for vehicles to be able to communicate with each other and with the road infrastructure, location and context information, uh, and, uh, in fact, we already have multi-tenancy or network slicing in that uh, we actually have multiple players operating on top of this network simultaneously. Now, why is the mesh so important? Because it has network effects that allow us ultimately, you know, to be able to increase coverage with every single vehicle that is added. Uh, and on top of that, a lot of the uh, information that has to be shared can actually be shared inside the mesh like software updates. Why should one vehicle have to connect to the cloud each time for software update when it can get the same software update for another vehicle? And as we move from privately owned vehicles to commercial fleets of vehicles, there's an inherent trust in a fleet of autonomous vehicles that is actually providing a service uh, to all of us. So the logic of how we build this infrastructure and how we manage our services on top of an infrastructure like this is radically different from what we would do today. And so, as one last thought, let me share with you that just as a car is a lot more than a faster horse, an autonomous vehicle is more than a self-driving car. It's going to be a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's going to be a mobile sensor getting terabytes of urban data for smart city applications. It's going to be a mobile billboard for advertising. It's going to be a mobile living room. Uh, and we are going to see that more and more uses of this vehicle uh, are, are going to emerge once you have a platform that is able to move massive amounts of data between the vehicles and the cloud. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. Uh, the Venium platform uh, that is able to connect uh, autonomous vehicles to each other and uh, to the internet and move massive amounts of data. Uh, we're already uh, trying it out uh, with partners in the AV space and we're building on everything we learn uh, from vehicle mesh networks around the world where today we offer fully managed mobile Wi-Fi, we offer a mobile ads platform uh, and data APIs so that telematics providers can actually build on top of our platform. So we're looking for partners in the telecom sector. We are already working with major uh, telecom operators, but also in the automotive sector, particularly those auto OEMs and tier one suppliers who want to leverage the mesh and the network effects to be able to provide the solution to moving all of this data. And that we can offer already today. Thank you very much. Via imaging, uh, 3D sensor imaging, and be able to detect breast cancer, breast cancer water leakage. You can literally see through wall. Um, and the use case is unlimited. Any industry you can imagine 
from VR, AR, agriculture, any industry. And with that, I'd like to welcome Ravi, founder and CEO of IA Imaging. Thank you, Edith.